big little legs. Skinny kid with plenty. If the Dallas Mavericks want a chance against the Boston Celtics in the NBA Finals, which is probably what it's going to be, then they're going to have to deal with this. We seen in the Thunder series, um, the Thunder were going to this type of offense every single game late fourth quarter. Basically, it's just we're attacking a defender. Which defender do we want to put on SGA? Because defenses switch so much, they know that that's going to happen. Right here, they're using Isaiah Joe. So they're going to come up with PJ, and they're going to switch this thing, and he's going to pop. This type of offense is very similar to what the Boston Celtics run. Celtics love Derek White as the ball handler, using Tatum as the screener, trying to get a switch. Tyrese onto Jason Tatum. They just do it in an opposite way. The Thunder used SGA as the ball handler, and he was the one they were trying to get switches for. The Celtics are trying to get a switch for Jason Tatum, but he's the screener. Basically, in switch defense, this time they didn't switch, they're in the drop. They're going to pop. If they don't switch, they will pop every single time. And it's going to lead to wide open threes just like this. In game four of the Thunder series, we've seen the Thunder running this exact same play. SGA as the screener just trying to get him to switch. And if they do, they're going to post him up. Trying to get as low as possible. You see Kyrie having to fight because they want to get as close to the elbow as they possibly can. The Boston Celtics do the exact same thing. Another thing the Boston Celtics do is they could use Tatum as the ball handler also and put Derek White in a screen. But a lot of the action with the Boston Celtics involves Derek White and Jason Tatum. All they're trying to do is get a switch onto Jason Tatum that they like. We see an SGA do the same thing in that series versus Dallas. Right here, they're going to run a hard hedge because they don't want to switch it. But Jason Tatum gets right around this hedge. I think Darius Garland was a poor matchup. You know, the, the Cavs just didn't really match up with the Celtics because they put Darius Garland on Derek White. In my opinion, you're going to have to put somebody on Derek White that can switch on to Jason Tatum. I do not think that can be Kyrie Irving. I don't want to see Kyrie Irving guarding Derek White. And they got to do a better job right here. If you're going to hedge, you have to stop him from turning the corner because once he does and Derek White pops, they run five out offense. You cannot help. If you choose not to hedge and switch entirely, then they're going to get one-on-one -on -one matchups. You see five out offense almost, but we got Chet in the dunker spot. The Celtics are a little bit harder to guard because they got somebody in the corner instead of the dunker spot. So you cannot help at all once you get this switch. I think the Dallas Mavericks either have to put somebody on Derek White who they feel comfortable switching on to Jason Tatum, or you got to really hard hedge that thing and not let him turn the corner with somebody who's quick and strong enough to do it. Right here, we see PJ was guarding SGA. Boom, they get the switch off. Like I said, they're going to seal. The Celtics could also do it with Drew Holiday also. Right here, they want the switch onto Tyrese Halliburton, so they're going to have whoever Tyrese is guarding come set the screen so it's gonna be interesting to me for uh to see who the boston celtics are going to attack defensively if that makes sense i'm probably wording everything wrong but you guys get what i'm saying is it going to be luca Kyrie? who is it going to be who do they want switched on to jason tatum well first off who the hell is gonna guard jason tatum probably most likely the thing that makes sense is pj washington i think the mavs had a little bit more size than the indiana pacers and the cleveland cavaliers so that's gonna be an advantage but even if they don't on this play you see force tatum out whoever has the ball do not let them get close to this three-point line because now when this when you see the switch is coming tyrese is gonna set a hedge Right here, Drew's got a slip. He's still holding the screen. He's going to pop late. They're going to force a turnover. If you get them forced out wide, or deep, deep, force them out wide, if that makes sense. Because if you get them get, if you let them get low position like this, see how there's no ball pressure. There's no ball pressure on Jalen Williams. So he's able to just walk up here and they let the switch happen. So my question is, is Dallas going to let the switch happen with Jason Tatum? That's number one. Another thing I've seen that the Boston Celtics do is um, they kill switch defense. So right here, they're going to switch this off ball action. Now they're going to get Jalen Brown one on one with the center. The reason they do this is because Al Horford is staying at the three point line. So if you don't switch, Horford is going to be open and they're going to have to rotate off. He's on the strong side. You can't. As you guys can see here, Dallas also has something that they like. You see Kyrie said, hey, they got Isaiah Joe in the game. We're going to bring him up. I think they're going to do this a lot versus Peyton Pritchard, Sam Hauser. I don't think Indiana really took advantage of this at all. 
All they're trying to do is get the switch. This type of action is so dangerous in today's game. We're just attacking a specific defender if they switch, which most likely they're going to, because if not, it's going to be dangerous. Now you see that they trap Kyrie Irving a lot. So are the Boston Celtics going to trap when Peyton Pritchard is switched on to Kyrie or Sam Hauser switched on to Kyrie? Because if they do, he will make the right play. And then players like Derrick Jones Jr. and PJ Washington are going to have this little floater, the little midi. They're going to be able to drive and kick or finish. The next question I have is how are the Boston Celtics going to guard Luka Doncic? Because Luka is not Andrew Nimhart. Luka is not Tyrese Halliburton. Now, we've seen they like Al Horford in the drop. Al Horford rarely comes up to blitz the screen. So, Luka, if this is Luka and Gafford or Derek Lively, it's going to be more dangerous because right here, shut down. That's not going to happen with Luka. So, I think the Boston Celtics are going to have to, for the first time, switch up their defensive coverage with Al Horford in the game. Now, another thing I notice is that the Boston Celtics love to guard post or big men with Derek White and Drew Holiday. They're very comfortable doing it. Right here, they, they ran a screen with Nemhard and Siakam. They get the switch. They switch everything, including these big men. Now, I do not think Dallas has a post-scoring big man on their team. Daniel Gafford is not a back-to-the-basket center. Derek Lively cannot post up. I, I haven't seen Derek Lively ever get a bucket in the post. So they are not going to be sealing and trying to attack these switches like the Indiana Pacers did with Miles Turner and Pascal Siakam, which I think they did a poor job of doing anyways because Derek White and Drew Holiday are good post defenders. So I doubt the Dallas Mavericks are going to slow down and seal up and try to post. It's not going to be like that. Instead, I think Luke is going to take advantage of some of these switches and Luke is smart. He knows that instead of trying to throw it into the post because they got a mismatch, he knows that he could shoot this because Derek Lively or Gafford now have advantage to get a rebound. So offensive rebounds are going to be huge for the Dallas Mavericks if they want to win the series. Gafford and Lively should be, if Lively is healthy, should be getting lots of offensive rebounds. They're not going to be sealing like this. I expect Luka to see if he, if he sees a switch, then he's either going to hopefully find somebody on a lob or a cut when they switch. They're going to slip the screen. That's the first step. If they don't slip the screen and they switch it and he sees that, he's going to shoot that thing. Luka I've seen takes a lot of early shot clock shots, but he knows that he has centers on switches and that's the only reason he's shooting it. Luka might not have the best shooting series again, like we've seen earlier in the playoffs, but that is because he believes his centers can get rebounds over Derek White and Drew Holiday. Now we've seen in the Clippers series that they did leave Derek Lively, um, or they did switch Derek Lively onto guard. I think we're gonna see a lot of uh, the same thing versus the Boston Celtics. They're gonna try to get Tatum and uh, Jalen Brown onto Derek Lively. And I think this is gonna be very dangerous because as you can see, Zub is in the dunker spot. You might not be able to see it because I'm in the way. Zub's in the dunker spot. The Celtics run five out offense. So as soon as, boom, this move happens, the Boston Celtics will score off of this possession. You see, PJ is able to help. He will not be able to help versus the Boston Celtics because they run a five out lineup. They're, they're not going to be able to leave centers on an island like this. Kind of similar to what we're seeing with um, Luka versus Rudy Gobert. Whenever they switch on a Rudy Gobert, they are going to score every single time. It's going to be the same type of thing versus the Boston Celtics. If they get a switch on a Lively, they're going to score. So it's going to be interesting to see if Lively could stay on the floor or if they're going to trap off of it. What they're going to do is Lively going to stay in the drop. We'll see. In my opinion, I think the best way to play the Celtics is to be in the drop because I don't even really think the Celtics have seen that type of defense yet in the playoffs. But most of the time, they're not even running screens without Horford. They're running it with Derek White and Drew Holiday. I think uh, Jalen Brown might be matched up with Derek Lively a lot. I think that is the one person they match him up with. They don't really run primary... Um, pick and rolls with Jalen Brown, but they'll run off balls for him and get switches like we've seen earlier in this video. So what are they going to do when Jalen Brown gets a switch onto Derek Lively? This is something that the Indiana Pacers, the Cleveland Cavaliers, the Miami Heat did not have. We see Al Horford likes to be in the drop. Zubox is in the drop, right? They're going over with Zub sliding over. He's going, look at this. This is great defense. He still finds a way to lob it up to Derek Lively because he's a lob threat. So I'm going to, um, we want to see how the Boston Celtics are going to react to that. They haven't dealt with something like that. But like I said, here it comes. This is the Boston Celtics bread and butter. Tatum is the screener. Boom. 
are they gonna switch no if they don't switch pocket pass and now that now they're they're done after this because they they play five out Jalen Brown is in the dunker spot but he's fading to the corner and now Derek White's gonna have an open three he missed it but you get what I'm saying now, I think something that the Boston Celtics can throw at the Mavericks I don't think it's gonna work they like to put Drew Holiday on centers right here's a pick and roll Luca and Derek Lively will cook this right here but because the Pacers were so focused on hey we got a small post up I don't think this is this type of offense won't happen with the Dallas Mavericks with the Dallas Mavericks Obi Toppin is clear to the corner so uh if this were the Dallas Mavericks this guy is clear to the corner and they're running a pick and roll because Drew Holiday is now guarding the roller this is something the Indiana Pacers did not have the ability to attack the Boston Celtics with like I said man TJ McConnell is not Luka right right here he has a lob okay Luka's finding this but he instead he throws it to Neesmith who takes a bad shot and now the Celtics got numbers running out in transition and they ended up blowing this game the Celtics are one of the few teams in the NBA that switch absolutely everything right look at this Tatum boom switch it leads to this they're not going to be able to do this versus the dallas mavericks it's going to be tough to switch because you got people like Derek jones jr Derek lively daniel gafford who are all lob threats who could slip okay i i just i think that's going to be something that the boston celtics are going to have to deal with they're going to deal with adversity for the first time in the entire playoffs dealing with counters to their switch defense because i don't think a single team has countered it yet right here we see the five out offense this is what i'm really scared about you know for the dallas mavericks because once they get somebody that could attack pj like this and boom one step by luke is gonna slide over now we got shooters we got al horford in the corner who could hit this shot every single time and i honestly think the closest thing to the boston celtics that the dallas mavericks have faced are the OKC Thunder. They're young, so they don't have as, as much experience, but they have defenders like Derek White and Drew Holiday that can match up with these two guys right here. But I'm telling you, this is the set that scares me with the um, Dallas Mavericks. Because in game four of this series, I saw the OKC Thunder spam it. Basically just getting a switch for SGA using this screen and this is all the Boston Celtics run with Derek White and Jason Tatum so they're gonna have to be able to stop this thing if not it's gonna be very tough this is very similar offense to the Boston Celtics so one thing uh that I'm you know thinking about are the matchups who's going to play who's matching up with who we see Jaden Hardy taking on a bigger role in this series versus Minnesota and Tim Hardaway taking a back seat in my opinion I think Josh Green is going to have to play a lot more minutes in the Celtics series if that's what's going to happen I don't even know if that's going to happen but most likely he's going to they're both up 3-0 or one Mavericks up 3-0 they also get Maxi Kleba back tonight um so that means more five out offense for the Dallas Mavericks which is something that the Celtics have not really dealt with yet is Tim Hardaway going to play probably not starting lineup most likely is going to be Derek Jones Kyrie Irving we're going to have Luka Daniel Gafford and PJ Washington all right so who's matching up with who who's Luka going to guard in my opinion I could see him guarding Drew Holiday that would probably make the most sense we are probably most likely going to have Kyrie Irving on Derek White which is probably going to be similar to what we've seen in the Dallas series of I mean the OKC series they're going to try to switch Tatum onto Kyrie Irving Kyrie's a great defender he's smart so we'll see how he's gonna you know do versus that um PJ Washington will probably guard Jason Tatum and then Derrick Jones Jr. will probably be guarding Jalen Brown or you could switch those two around for the Boston Celtics we got Jalen Brown Drew Holiday Jason Tatum and Derek White I don't know if Porzingis is gonna be back yet so for now it's Al Horford the big question is who is Drew Holiday and Derek White going to defend in my opinion Drew Holiday is guarding Luka Doncic 100% of the time Derek White is going to be on Kyrie Irving similar to Kaysen Wallace and uh, Lou Dort I don't know if we'll see full court pressure on Luka with Drew Holiday that's going to be interesting to see it's also interesting to see who Jalen Brown is going to guard because he he has been vocal about saying I want this guy give me this guy you know I'm a good defender he, he was guarding Miles Turner he could guard all, all five positions so there could be some switches we could see Jalen Brown trying to guard Luka Doncic sometimes because I don't think they just want Jalen Brown in the corner unless they do and he gets a rest for offense but again it, it doesn't matter the Celtics like to switch 
everything. So the big thing is for me, Al Horford, is he going to be in the drop or is he switching out on these dudes? Because if he's in the drop, he's too slow. I think Luke is going to cook him in the pick and roll. For the first time, we're going to see the Celtics being eaten alive in pick and rolls when Luka is with Derek Lively, Daniel Gafford. Because I really don't think they're going to be able to switch those type of actions. Everything else, off balls, you know, um, I don't think the Celtics, I mean, the Mavs don't really hunt matchups like that. Most of the time, they're screening with their big men or they're having off ball screens for like Kyrie or a shooter to get open. So only those will they'll switch. But in my opinion, it's going to be a fun matchup. I think if Dallas wants a chance, they got to figure out what are they going to do with that Jason Tatum and Derek White two man game? What are they going to do on those pick and pops? And what are they going to do when they get a switch onto a big? Are they going to trap off of that? How are you going to rotate? Are you able to rotate with a five out offense? That's going to be tough. So I think if the Celtics want to win the series, they're going to have to get switches onto Derek Lively, Daniel Gafford, and go to work. They're going to have to find a way to prevent Al Horford from for being in the drop the entire game because that, I think that's a recipe for disaster for the Boston Celtics. Are they going to trap the pick and rolls with Luka? Maybe, but I don't think they're going to trap it with Al Horford. Let me know what you guys think. Um, about this series, like I said, Dallas haven't even beat the Timberwolves yet, but I'm just assuming they are. So let me know how you guys are feeling down below in the comments. <laughs>